God's word is always encouraging uh, for us there in our as we read it. You can never uh, exhaust the truths of the Lord. I'm still learning, still uh, digging uh, things up, and uh, he speaks to me through his word. I think that's the most important way God speaks to all of us, his written word. That we, we have it to read. To, the psalmist said, I, I meditated on it. Blessed is the man who meditates. He doesn't sit in a seat of sky. That's what Psalm 1 says. It's, he doesn't get involved with the, the scoffers. <laughs> he doesn't get involved with the, the, the negative down. And those who take life and they don't give life. He doesn't get involved with that. But he chooses to meditate upon the things of God, enriching. And he meditates. He becomes like a tree. Uh, planted by the streams of water, where its roots are down into the depth of the of the source, of the stream. I liken that stream to God Himself. He is a stream. She just said it. Out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. I said it to Vern. We're not meant to be swamps. I think we were discussing. Uh, hey, by the way, Vernon's teaching on the Holy Spirit on the gifts. Uh, I think is this uh, Wednesday. Here at 6 o'clock, uh, 6.30 rather. Uh, and we are going through Paul's teaching and on the, uh, the, the, the nine gifts. There, there are other gifts that are mentioned, but how we put them in our, our lives. I think God wants us to, to operate in the gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He gave them to the church. He gave them so that we can strengthen one another, strengthen the body of Jesus Christ. So I'll just throw that in. We've been going through the book of John. We're on the 15th chapter this week. We just went through the 14th chapter. You know, there's a lot of troubled people in the world, amen? A lot of trouble. Why? You don't have to go looking for it very far, do you? There are people who are wondering what's going to happen, what's going to, what's going to take place. The Bible doesn't always specifically say all the things that are going to take place when the end comes, but... There are definite things that are happening in our world that are, are, are related to what Jesus talked about. In the last days, there will be, there will be uh, earthquakes, famines. There will be nations rising up against nations. We see so much of a rumble today. And he says to so look up when you see these things beginning. Look up, your redemption draweth nigh. But until then, he said, Jesus, you see, was, he was sensing the disciples in the 14th chapter. He was sensing, he could sense in his, in the language, there, let not your heart be troubled. No doubt the disciples were, were beginning to get a little uneasy, a little stirring because of their, they were, there was talk about, the Lord was beginning to talk about his departure. And they had just begun, you know, really three and a half years or so with Jesus was not enough. It just tells me that we need all eternity with our Lord to learn more and more who he is. Well, Jesus said some important things in my father's house. He said, I'm going to make a place for you. I go away. I'm not going to sit around idle. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And that's what Jesus is doing yet today for the believers, preparing a place for you that we can live. I don't know what it's going to look like exactly. All I know is that if Jesus is going to be there, it's going to be great. Amen. If the Lord himself, if I just had a little log cabin, a little shack, I'd be happy because I have Jesus. Amen. We don't need a lot because we have Jesus. He's the one who satisfies our innermost being. He is the one who has, has to be and wants to be seated in the heart of our hearts. There's a lot of stuff that is bidding for that seat in your heart, by the way. There's a lot of stuff in the world that wants to take that place. But God only, let's let God only on the seat of our heart. Our heart. Amen? So, there was some troubled hearts. So Jesus said another truth in the fourth inch. I'm going to just kind of reviewing a little bit. I'm going to go away, but guess what? I'm going to give you something. How many know what I'm going to say? I'm going to give you a helper. How many like the helper? How many need the helper? Yes, everybody says, yes. The helper is the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit makes the Word come alive, makes things understandable. He is the helper who will help us, guide us into truth. One of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to discern, discern what is right, what is wrong, what is truth, what is not truth, what is of God, what is of not, what is not of God. Remember, the word says the devil will come like an angel of light to deceive us. And Jesus referred to that in the last days, many will come in my name. But they are false prophets. How are we going to know the difference? We've got to walk with Jesus. We've got to talk with Jesus. We've got to spend time with Jesus. We can spend time with Jesus when we read his word, when we take it in, when we sit with him, when we worship him. Quiet time. How many like quiet time? Ah. Something about quiet time. You know, my mom said I never had trouble taking naps when I was growing up. I, I wish my sister was here. here to, she could probably vouch for that. And my wife says, you, you just, you know, you're a boy, and my, you know, a boy who needs to sleep. That's what my mom always said. Um... There are times where I, I really long to be quiet, alone with God. In fact, every day there's, there's, there's a longing in my heart that I need to do first things first. Yeah, man, my day goes so much better. But if I rush into my day and I just do what I want to do, I find myself struggling, struggling. Because I haven't taken the time to draw from the well of the water of Jesus. And so now the 15th chapter really has to do with abiding in the Lord. Drawing from his source. Drawing from who he is. And Jesus says, I am the vine. He says, the true vine. In other words, there are other vines or other so-called vines or other so-called imitation. There's not the real thing. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of activity that we can put in place of the vine, the true vine. But it won't satisfy. It won't get us to where we need to go, really. It won't be as effective. It will be empty. And he says, my father is the vine dresser. Well, he is the vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Now, I'm not uh, so up on what people who plant make, you know, make things grow better. I think Don had a, a gift when it came to flowers. He knew how to make them grow better. Well, there's, there's, what, what, is, what is Jesus referring to? He wants us to be able to grow uh, better. He wants us to be, be in him more so that he can flow through us. So that we can not just be a bunch of busy, busy, busy bodies, just a bunch of bumping around and doing a lot of stuff, but we'll actually be doing it out of this relationship with God. Can I just say this? This whole message just speaks to me because I can get uh, mixed up with doing the work of the Lord and then actually start to think, well, that's, now I've done the work for the Lord, now I've done my thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You flip that over. I must consecrate myself to the Lord. My consecrate myself means I must seek him first. I must love him above and beyond anyone, any ministry, anything. And focus on being what he wants me to be first. And then, out of that stems the, the flow, the substance, the realness, the truth. 
that Jesus wants us to be. What's going to change people? It's going to be the Spirit of God who knows every heart here today, who knows every thought, who knows every intent. He knows everything about us. And I'm so glad, in spite that he knows everything, he just says, I've got plans for you. And maybe you sometimes are wondering, are you worth anything? Yes. He gave his life from Calvary for you. Because he saw past the cross. And the joy set before him, despising the shame. He saw beyond all those who would be around the throne one day in heaven, in that place that he prepares for us. You see, now, the Lord is the vine. He's the source. Paul described it this way. I preach Christ and him crucified. And that was his main message. That was what he went into to bring the message into the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the people of high-ranking spiritual. He brought this so-called Jesus whom they couldn't accept. But he kept preaching Christ. I had a man, and I shared this some time ago. I was at a wedding reception, and we just met ah, just across our, where we live. It was at a reception, and we had time, and so we were just, you know, hanging out, discussing. And the man kind of caught uh, what, uh, you know, I was kind of caught a hold of what I do, and, and you know, he was kind of interested in that. And he said, you know, I used to be an atheist. Whoa, really, tell me about that. What, 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 what changed you? Well, obviously, he had changed. Could he become, uh, you know, very, he was able to, you know, support our, we believed in the Lord. It, you know, it was all, it was, it was easy to talk to. He said, what changed me is when I began to think what Jesus did on the cross. And he gave his life in spite of, of me not accepting him. He still gave. I couldn't argue with that. I didn't know what to do with that. You see, for a while he was angry at God. For a while he said, you know, why, why this, why this, why would this, why would God allow this? And we have this feeling and sense of God, it is a God, why all this stuff? Let me tell you why, what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says. Adam sinned, therefore all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I don't have to go look for trouble in the world. The world is trouble. The world is troubled. The world is, people are broken. There are broken homes. There are broken hearts. There are broken uh, uh, whole attitudes. You, you name it, it's there. Can anyone understand that pain? Yes, Jesus can understand your pain more than any human being. The good news is that he wants to heal and he wants to bring, like you said, a, a mess, message out of your mess. Turn it around and begin to use you for the things of God. That's why Jesus begins to describe that there is a vine dresser that he, that he takes away every branch that uh, he takes away and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it. Ouch! Right? Pruning sounds painful. A surrendering thing. Of giving up what's mine, but it's mine. I work for it. God gave you the strength. It's really His. Pruning is for our good so that we might be more like Jesus. 
Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews described, the Lord disciplines those whom he loves. Disciplines. Does that mean he gives us a spiritual spanking? Well, if that helps you understand that. Um, he disciplines us. He brings us to a place where we, you know what? We're, he's arresting a bit of an attitude. You know how he does it? In a still, small voice. And if we're sensitive to listening, he'll correct this. He'll correct this as we go along. It's a daily walk. It's a one foot in front of the other. He takes away uh, the branch that does not bear fruit. He takes away. It's a little tough. In other words, if we're not connected to the vine, we're going to dry up. We're no good. We're not. We're not connected. Jesus said to those who were. In a sense, were false prophets saying, I, we did this in your name, we did this in your name. But they were false, they weren't the real thing. I never knew you. Which tells me, in order, how do we know we're in the vine? We, we've got we've, we've, we've to take a step toward Jesus, and he takes a step toward us. And every day after, he keeps taking a step toward him. He keeps taking a step. You start to walk, and you start to talk with him. You start to... Uh, uh, reason throughout the day as you go along. How many have done that? You're, you're having conversation with the Lord all the day long. That's, that's abiding. That being tied in. How do I get this? How do I paint the picture? It's fine. This vine crosses Denominations, it crosses worlds, other worlds, other nations, other cultures. This same vine can touch those who don't speak our language. This same vine, this Jesus, has this, the nutrients, has the source to open the eyes of the unbeliever. To encourage the faint-hearted. Abide in him. He brings salvation, number one. After you're saved, you begin to learn how to walk with him. How to understand what he wants. I'm not working for my salvation. I'm not working for it. But as a result of my walk with the Lord... He begins to put things on my heart, your heart, to do. Now you're working with Jesus. You're not just working for him. He's not there just whipping us to do things for him. But he's there leading us, the shepherd. My sheep follow me because they recognize my voice. My sheep won't follow a stranger. They don't recognize that voice. And so this whole thing of abiding has to do with a heart that is intent on knowing him above anything else. Paul said that I might know him, that I might know him. After he had done so much for the kingdom, Paul himself who was saved as one who thought he was doing a service for God, he was killing Christians before his conversion, thinking he was doing a service for God spiritually dead only religious and Jesus met him and changed his life opened his eyes gave him a new beginning gave him a purpose for living he became such a firebrand I believe that's just Paul Wanted to somehow, I think he wanted to make up for the loss of his life previous. Whatever God calls us, you may not be an Apostle Paul, but you may make a difference to the neighbor that you live next to. You can make a difference to the waitress 
when you give it a word of encouragement to her or him. You can give a word of encouragement to your family. What am I saying? Your ministry starts out of a love relationship with Jesus. Your ministry starts there, it continues there, and it must on, keep on coming from the Lord himself. There will be days when the Lord, you wonder if he hears your prayer. There will be days. There will be moments you may question, what now? What is this? What is this all about? We don't understand. But you know, there's something about going through dry times. When I say dry times in your spirit, it may be that those dry times are causing your roots, your connection with the Lord to dig in deeper. And you're going to penetrate deeper. You're going to go through things. You're going to seek him like you've never sought the Lord before. But as I see it, as the closer we get to the end, it seems to like the scriptures encourages us to draw near all the more. Don't forsake the assembling of yourself together, but all the more as you see the final day approaching, encouraging one another on the, in the things of the faith. You see, you know what the Lord really wants? He wants you to love him with all, his, all your heart. All that is with all, every part of you. That nothing, that you know that you know, that you have, that you're all in, that you have taken the stand, that you have made that step toward him. You know what will happen as a result? You will bear fruit. You will bear fruit. You, your life will, will give off an aroma. Your life will give off a presence. Your life will begin to uh, touch others around you. The Lord himself is the one who wants to be the light in your heart. Didn't he say when men cast insults that you persecute you for my name's sake and you are blessed you are you are to be a, like a salt like light on in the earth and don't let uh, anything take that away from you you know what he wants us to live he wants us to live in faith not fear faith yeah, I don't know for sure how it's all going to work out. I don't know my life. I don't know when he calls, when, when my time comes. I don't know that. But I believe that I'll be with him. I believe that he's preparing a place, that he'll walk right through that valley of the shadow of death, that we're going to step in to the presence of Jesus. I want to just get it across. Let's focus on being. Let's focus on being in the Lord first. Let's focus on enrichment, on, on the word of God. If nothing else, just let nothing else take the place. Nothing can take the place of just you and Jesus. You see, if we don't abide in him, what's going to happen? Verses are clear. Verse 6, if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. That's a person who never, never took time to take the Lord into their heart. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, Ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciple. Though I've heard lately, if you can do it, then it doesn't take God. If you can ask God for something you can't do yourself, then it's going to take God. If you're asking God for something that's beyond you, that's a good thing. You're asking for something that's 
beyond your ability. You can't take care of it. You can't fix it. You don't have enough money. You don't have enough energy. You don't have enough strength. But God is able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond all that we ask or think. So it comes down to this. Here I am, Lord. I am trusting in you. I'm seeking in what you said. And so it speaks to his disciples. By this, my fathers glorify that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. How did Jesus say the disciples were going to be known? By their love for one another. Who wants to go to that church if they're all fighting and hating each other? Oh, none of that's around here. Love goes beyond. Love goes, looks past faults. Love covers a multitude of sin. What does that mean? I, I can't take sin out of people's lives. But I can love people in spite because God loves them no matter what. And his wish, his heart's desire is that they would come to know him. And if I, if I brush them off, if I say, you know, I don't want anything to do with you, then I've hindered the work of the Lord. I'm not working with God. I'm working against God. You see how that works? And so, oh God, when I seek to love you, what's going to happen? I'm going to start to love other people around me more. I can't love people of my own strength like God wants me to love people. And you guys are easy to love, don't get me wrong. You guys are wonderful. But I'm talking about people outside of the faith yet. We're going to be in the last day. We're going to be confronted. Who is this God you talk? I talked to a person this morning outside of the church as we're going to receive communion in a bit. Uh, I was getting some of the, the, the emblems. And he said, you're going to have a high class breakfast. You know what I said, this is for our communion. Have you ever heard of the word communion? No. Oh. Well, I just took it as an opportunity. <laughs> you know, the, the broken body of Jesus represented in the cracker, and then the, the shed blood of Jesus represented in the Jews. Oh, it was easy. Kind of fun. Why don't we just start with people and love it on them? You might open up an opportunity to bear fruit, to bring them into another. Maybe they're at a, maybe they're at a, a level of four, and they're on a scale of one to ten. Maybe they're on a four, and you brought them up to number five. Yeah. Someone else comes along, waters, encourages. See, it's all about planting. Ministering, cultivating, nurturing. This whole, this whole spiritual journey starts with Jesus. Surrender. I need you. I can't get to heaven on my own. I can never live good enough. I can never outweigh my bad with my good. I cannot even minister like I should effectively. I don't know about you, but I want the real thing. Because I know in this heart I know when I'm being honest and when I'm not being honest. And it's so good to be honest. 
It's so freeing, so healing. You say, God, I'm struggling with this stuff in my life. I'm struggling with it, this, this flesh of mine. Lord, I just cast it on to you. Let the Lord take care of it.